I'm back, the headless YouTuber doing headless planty things, and welcome back to another week of plant to do's. I feel like it's kind of been a long time since I've filmed one of these, but it really hasn't been that long. But this week is kind of an exciting week because I do have some imports coming. This is my first import of the year, maybe my last, I don't know. I'm trying to not import too much this year just because my money is going to other things like traveling and my sister's having a new baby and just all these other things. So um, yeah, first import of the year. It was supposed to arrive today, which is why I wanted to start my week of plant to-dos today, but I think it got delayed. There's a chance it might not arrive, but that's okay because there were actually a few things that I wanted to do before they came, which was, handle my box of laziness and I will show you what that looks like. Ugh, scoot over and uh, I'll show you my box of laziness that I'm currently working with right now. If you don't know what a box of laziness is, it's um, kind of an accumulation of the things that I work on during the week, like when I do repots or rehabs or whatever. And instead of just kind of immediately washing my vessels and sorting the pond and the leka and whatever I'm working with, I just chuck it into this box and just save that for future me. Um, unfortunately, we're at the absolute brim of <laughs> the box of laziness so today i really have to get it sorted because i need some of these vessels for my imports and also i may need the bin for my imports um my tent is maxed out in terms of capacity so i might need to do the double box method for the imports just to make sure i'm giving it the conditions that it needs and one of the imports specifically i feel like is going to be a to acclimate so um, i really need to kind of like make sure i'm prepared before it gets here so anyway that's what is going on today doing these kinds of plant chores is my least favorite thing about the hobby and uh i know that it can be prevented but i'm just not the type of person that's like gonna have a full day of like filming or repotting and then just oh, i'm gonna go clean <laughs> literally after i turn off my camera i like run straight to bed and just and just i'm gonna do that get everything sorted i'm probably not gonna show you the actual washing of it because that's kind of boring um i have shown you how i sterilize my leka and my other substrates in other videos but i will show you kind of like what's in my box of laziness show you how i sort things out and get organized just in case i don't know i don't know why not why the hell not so i'll show you a little snippet of this thing this thing that i'm dealing with over there it's all gonna be time lapse i'm not gonna talk if anything i'll just throw some blurbs up on the screen anyway i've blabbed too much welcome back to another week of plant to do's i think it's gonna be an exciting week and let's just get started
close our eyes and say hi. 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 Is it taped? Is it? Oh, it is. Oh. <laughs> I should have just let you guys it shake it moving. for like... You was, like, was going up a little bit. Yeah. Shake for like five, good five minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thank God. <laughs> Ew, styrofoam. No. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My baginda. <laughs> curled. Large, yeah. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, five, six, 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 like you mean like this waterberry anatomy? That's massive. Wow. God, that new leaf looks so delicate and spinachy, like yeah. wet spinach. <laughs> it's, it's gonna have a lot of damage, but it's okay. The old, two older leaves are really nice, anyways, right? Yeah. yeah. It's so weird funny. now. It's like potted. That's really weird. But maybe weird. it's yeah. but maybe it's good, so I can just put it in the tent right away. Why is it so oh, big? Oh, that catafel looks big. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's so cute. Is it so cute? No, not really. I think it's more green than the SP silver. Yeah, have. I think so too. It's less, it doesn't have that blue tint. Oh, it's so pretty. This is in pretty good condition. Am I gonna remember these when I get home? <laughs> So what's the difference between the platinum wood SD silver then if this is silvery? It's probably just growing <laughs> conditions. <laughs> yeah. That's longer. These leaves are like, maybe that's the difference. Ooh, that one looks pretty. Ooh. 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 Wow. Ooh. Oh my god. Wow. Oh. Jing, that is so pretty. beautiful. There's oh, definitely look, a difference. Yeah, it looks different. Yeah, there's oh, it's definite. so pretty. And now we have to compare Jeez. to SP Silver, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> this is the. <laughs> you're, you're getting sick and then. She's gonna sh. <laughs> <laughs> Ripping it open like savage. Oh my god. Gonna it looks there. huge. What the hell is going on? It's okay. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm so quiet. We're like not talking. Oh, Herc. <laughs> Herc. I didn't realize you got three of them, you crazy oh, girl. Well, I just wanted to see the difference, you know? That's an expensive uh, observation. Oh my goodness. Dang, it's That's huge. huge. But is yeah. it different? Of, uh, it's maybe lighter color? Yeah, like this one is definitely greener. That one is like That's super like bright and green, silver. Right? Yeah. Your tent is gonna look so magical. Mm. Big boy. Wow. Shape wise, this is similar, right? The veins mm -hmm. on that one. I think that's my favorite. Oh God, yeah, so I think beautiful. it's so like sunken in. Yeah. And it has those like secondary veins that are actually off mm -hmm. more. It looks so like cushy almost. Mm -hmm. So this one is philodendron SP silver, silver which is the least oh, silvery of all. Look at this one. Look at this one. Yeah. Not that silver. It's so pretty though. Okay, whatever glorious and platinum is, I'm gonna open it. Oh. Please do. <laughs> She's been squatting like that. My my beginner would have been numb. What? I, you I guys can't deep squat? squat Not for that long. It's an Asian thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's so, so platinum about this? Uh, it's just a glorious, glorious um, white veins. <laughs> it's white veins, I think. 
I mean, it has a no. It looks yeah, yeah, yeah. The condition is really good on that. That one actually looks almost identical to the first leaf on mine that I last imported on my really round one. Right. Yeah. That's a well, really good nice. one. Yeah. I mean, it's cute. But it's super well, cute. It's really like, expensive compared to Gloriosum. I think so. I think it was like 80 bucks. Oh, Jesus. But then, like, it's just. Is it platinum? <laughs> what well, part of it is platinum? The veins? I guess. It's really firm. Yeah, I mean the condition really good. Uh, really condition. good except for just this new leaf, but it's mm. inevitable. Yeah, that was expected. What's this one? This yeah. is metallicum. Oh okay. CF I think. But CF means like it's it's put that plant but it's showing like a little different trait, right? No, I think it's it up is like it looks like the plant, but it's not that plant. Usually, I think see it. Oh, this one's so nice! Oh, 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 oh. Wow, this is more at what I was looking for, I guess. Oh, that's so them. cute, and it looks perky too. Yeah, I know they all look so, so cute. happy. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> <laughs> so cute! Oh, that's nice. Whatever Esmeralda and Silver is. Esmeralda and Silver? Yeah. Better be Silver. <laughs> it better be just all Silver if you're gonna throw it against a wall. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, it's just a totally person. The crazy people. <laughs> I think people are so used to seeing me doing plow. Oh my gosh. That's cute. <gasps> what the heck? Okay. Okay. okay what's, but, but what's silver it? about it? <laughs> I think oh. the base is a bit of like a plow, like a metallic -y. There it finish. goes. Yeah. Or like, yeah, along the, like the midrib. Like it, it's a little. Usually it's green, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's super interesting. Yeah. Like this leaf you can really see. Oh, weird. That's so crazy. Good haul, man. I wonder, because yeah. the newest leaf doesn't have any red on the back. Right? No, it doesn't. Yeah. The caterpillar, I mean, it's still the petiola. Petio petiola. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> it's not the most exciting view, but it has the best light. I'm going to open my imports. Um, I only got three because had a lot of expenses around this time. So the first one that I'm gonna open is the Philodendron. They, they labeled it as Philodendron Postazanum AF Columbia, but this is just Philodendron SP Columbia. So something a little bit different this time around with Equiflora is that they've packaged it in like pots this time. It's actually very, very well packaged. Um, just based on Jing's unboxing, so I was really impressed this time around. Um, I feel like in general, Equiflora has had better packaging than um, Equigenera, but I think that their volume is much higher, so it kind of makes sense. like a pasta for sure this is beautiful beautiful wow so the difference between my my philodendron sp columbia silver I, I i don't actually know the difference between all of them yet but mine is definitely more silvery than this and i've been seeing a more green one go around on instagram and i wanted to get my hands on it so i think that i got the right one and um, this is exactly what I was hoping for. And I'm actually glad that it's on the smaller side because I, uh, I mean, my tent is maxed out. All I have right now is my largest EXO, which only holds about 60% humidity. So I'm not quite sure my imports are gonna really like it in there. But anyway, yeah, this is 
beautiful. Smallest leaf. And then um, I think I'll open them all first and then I'll kind of show you guys what's going on in the substrate. The next one is a Philodendron Gloriosum. And I'm hoping that this is a form that looks similar to what I've had before, not just the regular Gloriosum Verde or whatever they call it. Looks like a regular Gloriosum. This is a freaking bush. <laughs> Look how bushy it is. Um, this looks like two plants. One. Oh, it is. They sent me two. Like, I'm not sure why, but there are two separate plants in here. Hmm. Interesting. Honestly, I think this is a regular Gloriosum. Oh well. <sighs> the last one is the one I was the most excited about and I did not think it was going to be this big. It's like as long as my torso. This is a Philodendron Serpens Chocolate. And I used to own a regular Serpens, but it died. The Serpens Chocolate has like a more like reddish back I think or like a brownish color to back feel. I heard that these are a to acclimate though so I'm really really nervous. I was just gonna put this in a bin but I didn't think it was gonna be this big. So now I'm a little bit scared for her. pulling polyfill off of these fuzzy petioles for the rest of my life. Wow. What a specimen. Sorry, I know you guys are probably dying to see it, but I just want to take off all this polyfill from these fuzzy petioles before I show it to you. <gasps> oh my gosh. I don't know what the deal is with this ch chocolate thing, but it looks normal to me. Although I think that these leaves are a little bit darker than a regular serpent's. They look very, very, very dark. And this is just so much bigger than, honestly, I thought I was gonna get, I thought I was gonna get a specimen that was like maybe this big. Not like seedling size, but just like a little bit larger than seedling. And um, it's huge. These petioles are so fuzzy. Oh my gosh. I can't. Let's do a head test. Head test. This is not even the largest leaf, I think. Actually, I think this is the largest leaf. I was kind of hoping Aaron would text me back because Aaron imported six plants that are very exciting and I wanted to open them on camera, but I didn't want to open it without her permission. We've got some more to open. Ah, bless Erin's heart. So, I'm interested to see her Philodendron Gloriosum to see if it is like the regular one or if it's like a dark form, round form, whatever. It's always like roulette when you order from Equiflora or like any Gloriosum from Ecuador. You might get, because there's so many forms, they kind of just send you whatever. I have a feeling it's gonna look regular. It's a lot of polyfill. But I'm appreciative of this packaging because, not to call anyone out, but Equigenera always just like puts my, puts theirs in plastic and then just calls it a day. And like that $300 Patricia that I bought, my last import, was just in plastic with newspaper and it was all bent. Oh, we got another regular Gloriosum. You say it like it's a bad thing, but you know, you kind of hope for like the form that's not as common. I'm like simultaneously sending this in the group chat. Honestly, for the price that we paid, it was a little bit too much because we can snag these locally for like $15 now. But you know, 
that comes with importing there's not like risk i mean there is risk but like when you're kind of hoping it's going to be something else you might not always get that but i've got a pretty good lineup of gloriosums in my home so i'm not i'm not mad honestly this one is a philodendron gloriosum dark and the one that jean got was very very beautiful it looked like my my round one like that's my pride and joy it's really nice that they put some holes in some of these that like were a little bit more damp to kind of release some of that moisture looks like a pretty good size oh my gosh this is incredible Look at that venation, it is so beautiful. So here's what you wanna look for in the different forms of Gloriosum. You'll see that this petiole is round and you can see these like, I think they call it like striations in the petiole, these little sort of like green sort of marks on it. Why won't it focus? Oh, cause my face. Whereas, the regular Gloriosum has D-shaped petioles and the striations are like much lighter. That's one thing you can look for. The abaxials are a very pink color and then the sinus has like that reddish color. Head test, it's a pretty good size. I just love how it really is very dark. It's super, super, super dark compared to like this Gloriosum. Very noticeable difference. So I was kind of hoping for something like this, but there is a reason that the price difference is so different. And I think that Equigenera and Equiflora have caught on because they were sending these out as like regular Gloriosums. And I think people were just realizing that that's what they were doing. They were just like hoarding them. And so now they've They've caught on, darn. Um, let's do the Ethereum Bessier app. I don't own a Bess, surprisingly. This one feels a little soggy. I'm actually very hungry. very firm like they don't feel like imports they feel like they're they're so firm and healthy oh my gosh look at this leaf it's so precious oh. it has very like regale lobes here's the smallest leaf really love this sort of like wide sinus and like elongated leaf, so nice. Let's do the Philodendron Pasta Af Columbia. This one is slightly larger than mine, but pretty much looks identical. Um, literally has the same exact sort of leaf blade texture and even color as a Pasta Zanum. And I think that's why they're calling it Philodendron Pasazanum Af Columbia. It's beautiful though. It's very, very green. Oh, I'm so happy we got the right ones because I mean I love I love the one I have. It's very silvery. I really want the one that Jing got. Oh, this necklace is so annoying. Um I really want the one that Jing got. The super super silver one. But this one was definitely next on my radar and wanted a really green one but hers is really nice the leaves feel very very plump and firm i have a feeling that this round of imports besides my serpents is going to be a fairly easy um, acclimation process just because they don't look like they have 
undergone a ton of stress in comparison to how they how previous imports have came in um, of course they always look the best they're gonna look typically right out of the box but just based on how these feel and how these look and how they were packaged I have um, faith the next one is a philodendron Lynn Hanonier Hanonier I can't remember if this is the one that's kind of difficult to acclimatize like it requires very um, specific conditions that are not like a lot of aeroids but I could also be I could also be confusing it for another plant yeah oh my gosh just moth everywhere that texture I don't think I'd ever trust myself with one of these. Wow. This is freaking incredible. I do think she has one of these already, but she's like really, really been loving it. So I think this is a duplicate, if I can remember correctly. This one is feeling a bit limp, a bit soft, um, and it feels quite dehydrated, but I think Erin will be able to get it looking better in no time, but man, this one is really, really beautiful. I thought it was, I actually thought it was gonna be a, li a bit larger, but there was just a lot of polyfill in there. Sad times because this is the last one and it's an Anthurium Crystalline in Black, one of my all time favorite Anthuriums. Uh, such a fun plant to watch grow. Very robust growth. Beautiful, beautiful emergent leaves. I can't tell if it's a large plant or if there's a lot of polyfill. Oh, this one looks nice. Ow! My shoulder just like popped out of the socket. Amazing. Wow. As if she needed another monster to add to her tent. Her crystal is so, so massive. This leaf is so precious and cute. I don't know how to film with my face in the frame. It keeps wanting to focus on me. Definitely bigger than my head, I think. Or like as big as my head. Okay, I'm gonna separate Erin's because I'm not gonna open up her pots. I'm going to let her do the fun stuff. Ugh, I don't wanna say goodbye to this thing. It's so beautiful. Goodbye. Now comes the scary part of what is in here. This moss is just all cut up, okay. <laughs> I've never seen a pink pot before. It's like Barbie pink. It is super compacted in here. Oh, and it's super rooted. Ow. I've never seen moss like this. It's like it went through a grinder or something. Super fine and fluffy. Okay, thoughts on this root system. Not the worst, um, but I do have a feeling that in a few days time, a lot of these finer ones are going to potentially mush off, but I don't think I'm actually gonna be cutting anything. I'm gonna see how they do. Just because they don't feel dry, they actually feel quite okay, and I don't wanna preemptively chop them off like I normally would but the other times that I chop roots off it's because I could just feel that they were so bad but this is actually not bad at all yeah I've got a lot to clean up though there's some broken ones up here that I can remove I'm not actually going to be cleaning up the chunks right away tonight I'm going to let them sort of chill out and kind of just <laughs> de-stress I'll stick them in a bin and just kind of give them back that humidity and warmth 
that they were used to, where they came from. And then tomorrow, or even the next day, I'll go in and kind of clean them up a little bit. But yeah, I'm actually feeling pretty good about this root system. I am not mad about it at all. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Got a decent sized chunk here. Probably have, um, I, I probably will chop off this bottom half to propagate or even up here because there's like almost no roots down here besides this little tiny one down here, but all of the roots are up here. So I can even chop like up to here and have several nodes for propagation. I'm actually really, really, really happy with this purchase and it's already a pretty decent size, it's beautiful. And yeah, you can see that this one is crawling. So um, thank goodness I did not need another climbing philodendron SP. Uh, let's put this down here. Next one is this philodendron floriosum that apparently has two plants in it for whatever reason. I'm not sure if it's one stem with two growth points or they just for whatever reason stuck two plants in here which wouldn't really make a lot of sense for them to send me two plants intentionally. It's very very husky moss mix. Kind of gross. I can tell that some of this is rooted into this plant and I don't actually think they're allowed to do that technically. I believe everything has to be bare root, meaning not sticking to the substrate. Like the substrate is just for traveling purposes, not used as like the original growing media. But when you have such large parcels being imported into the country, I don't think that, you know, they really, I mean, they don't open it for the most part. But yeah, this one is really rooted into here and can't really tell what this situation is. Why are there two plants? Oh my gosh, it's so rooty. I don't even know what I'm looking at here. It's like a solid mass. I've actually never received an import like this where it was super rooted into the substrate. Um, oh yeah, okay, so it's one chunk with two activated growth points. It's kind of nice that they didn't rip off the other growth point and sell it separately to someone else. They just kind of gave it to me because they totally could have separated this and had it as two orders. But I do think I'm gonna separate it and it looks like it's already coming off. Oh, yep, there it goes. You can see where it was connected right there, but it was super wobbly. So here's plant number one so tiny and then plant number two here is a little bit larger oh i hate this i hate moss i love moss and i hate moss decent sized chunk um i love doing that yeah not too bad Root system is actually pretty decent. I do think stuff like this is gonna eventually mush off later, but I'm gonna give it like two days and see what they're looking like until I make a decision. Last but not least, I'm hoping that this serpent at least has some decent like nodes that I can work with if the, I need to re-root because I've just heard that rooting these is a freaking nightmare. And I'm actually having trouble rooting my squamic qual. Oh man, it looked like there was a nice fuzzy root before importing and now it's all dried. Darn it. Please don't be rooted in here. Oh my gosh, look at this chunk, it's huge. So here's, an actual, here's a great example of propagating, cutting across a rhizome. You can see that this used to be like here and then they just chopped it down the center. I would say that's a pretty successful propagation. These roots look awful though. They are so dry and crispy. 
this moss is really really dry there is like almost no hydration in here this one is actually really wet and then this one is just dry and this is one that i would would have hoped was a little bit more damp but i think that this is going to be a rerouting situation i'm not really feeling very confident in these roots at all and what is this husk coco husk ow i'm gonna have splinters later that is a huge chunk man would have loved to see what the mother plant looked like this looks absolutely terrible my guess is i'm just going to reroot this from scratch but i don't want to do anything right now just because it's so fresh but like look at how this is like completely dead yeah darn i'm very very nervous for this one i just it's not like it was like crazy crazy expensive but it was still a good amount of money but Look at how beautiful this is. This is like the serpents of my dreams. Insane. These freaking hairy petioles. Let me see if you can hear it. Oh, it's so nice. I think I'm going to stick them in water for a few days and stick them in a bin. I need to clear out my other bin and I will show you how I'm going to have this set up for like the next few weeks I think. Um, I was contemplating this whole time whether I wanted to stick it in my EXO but I really do not have confidence that it's humid enough in there. It's very empty and um, I just don't think that's a good idea so. Ugh this moss is so gross. The moss that it came with, <laughs> what did I say? The moss that it came with is freaking disgusting but I'm gonna use it as bedding in this makeshift greenhouse for the time being so that i'm not using like my good moss just for acclimation purposes I'm just gonna dump it all in here That should be enough for the bedding. I actually have these imports that I've been caring for for Jing. Some of them are not doing too well, like this one. I don't even know what this is. She got this from Equigenera, but it's had so much yellowing since it was imported. These are all import roots. And while they look nice in color, they're very mushy and soft. And so when people ask me why I chop off roots that it comes with, even though it looks nice, it's because they end up looking like this and I don't want these roots. So I am still gonna leave it. I'm gonna have sort of like an import care day sometime this week, but that is not today. Oh, that's a root. This one. I don't remember what this is called, but it's really, really freaking big. Um, so I'm going to stick this in here as well. Hopefully it fits. I don't know if it will with the top on, but I think that these could use a little bit more humidity as well. I might need to lean it a bit like that. And then I need something for my serpents. I'm gonna put my two Gloriosums in this little Starbucks cup. And then I will fill it with water. And then I've got just enough space for my serpents.
I'm just taking another clear bin and I'm putting it over the top of this one. They're not exactly the same size, so I have to be very careful. And then, I'm not sure if this is gonna be the right size bungee cord. I think it might be a little too long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tie this once to shorten it a little bit. Like that. And now I've got some tension and it's a lot more secure. So now I'm gonna set up my light that's gonna go on top of it and then find a place to put it for the time being. Here she is, she's all tucked in. Um, I double bungeed it so that it doesn't slide around and it's um, gonna stay nice and humid in there. There is a chance that I might add some parchment paper to the, to the bottom of this box so that it diffuses the light even more and it's not too strong since this is quite uh, close to the grow light, um, especially I don't want my serpents to get burned. So I'll just have to keep an eye on that. But otherwise I am thinking that it's going to be in here maybe until Tuesday, today is Sunday. Sorry, the lighting is crap right now, but um, today is Sunday. I will probably get them out of here on Tuesday to do like pest management stuff, get them cleaned up, clean up the chunks, cut off roots. But for now, I just want them to settle into Canada and not stress them out even more than they already are. Anyway, um, that is it for me tonight. It has been quite the day. I still have all of my vessels out in the kitchen. I only got about halfway and then I gave up and went to sleep. So I'm going to finish that up tonight off camera and I will catch up with you guys in the morning. Can you get out of my shot? Oh! <laughs> oh damn. Did I say you can have some coffee? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Wow, we're just making assumptions now in this house. I'm gonna drink five sparkling waters today. Oh, actually, that literally happened the other day where I came home I'm like, how are there no more sparkling? No, glass? listen, I, I have like I have one a day. <laughs> I really need a sparkling water company to sponsor this YouTube channel. It's a problem. Good morning. Happy Monday. I'm showing my face for everyone who just thinks that like I show my I don't show my face for some mysterious reason. Just don't like seeing my face on the viewfinder. So anyway, it is Monday morning and guys, this took me all day. I like all day yesterday. I was washing dishes probably until about midnight and I don't ever want to do that again. So <laughs> I'm gonna try to be more proactive about washing my vessels when I'm doing things, like right after I'm doing it, I'm gonna try. I don't think it's too late to start a New Year's resolution because I didn't make any this year because I think resolutions are kind of dumb. Try to stop pacing your tail, babe. It's just your tail. Remember we said that's your, your friend, okay? Your tail is your friend. Do you want to say hi to everyone? Come here. Um, yeah, so I feel like New Year's resolutions are just... Thank you very much for that. New Year's resolutions are dumb, right? We don't like them, right? So, um, yeah, I don't want to do that again. It took me all day. My body literally hurts from washing dishes. Oh, you're heavy. So let me put this away. I'll meet you in there and... Now that is one sketchy looking dude. Okay, just, you get it.
thing is today. I'm done with myself. I'm done with myself. You guys, I fully just ran around the house. I really thought I could get there. So then I left him a message and I was like, hey, I screwed up. I was supposed to have an appointment today at 1120. I'm still at home. Can I reschedule it? Can I still come in? And uh, no one was answering, so I just left a message. They called me back and they're like, you don't have an appointment today. And I was like, yes, I do. May 4th. They're like, yeah, May 4th. I'm like, yeah, today, May 4th. She's like, it's April. <laughs> it took her a solid 30 seconds for me to register that we are in the month of April, not May. Can't make this stuff up, you guys. So I didn't miss my appointment, but clearly I am an idiot and I have no sense of time. Wow. My heart is like racing. Anyway. When you work from home, you kind of like just lose track of your days. I was wondering why I'm like, I was like, I was checking my credit card payment today to see because it's always due on the it's always due on the fourth, and I checked and it was like you don't owe anything, and I'm like I'm pretty sure I didn't pay my credit card yet, but it said that my minimum payment was zero, and so I was like okay maybe I just did it and didn't remember. That's because I did make. April's payment, but not May, because not May yet. <sighs> Things just... Making so much sense. I just broke this pot. Um, all right, carrying on then. <laughs> All right, so next thing on the agenda is to mix some new Lechuza Pond stuff. I already have like a whole bin here of Lechuza Pond, Fine, Lekka, and Perlite, coarse Perlite. But something that I wanna talk about on this channel is Orchiata. And I, I think the first time that I used Orchiata was back in 2019 and I just really, really loved it. It comes in all different grades. This is the fine grade. What Orchiata is, is just aged bark and it holds water and nutrients on the outer surface of it. And because of the way that it's aged, it doesn't decompose. And so it just holds its structure um, really well over a long period of time. And during the bark aging process, bad pathogens are removed and it like promotes microorganisms that are good for your plants. It retains water, but is also really good for aerating your, um, your substrate to kind of break apart a lot of that soil that becomes really, really dense. And I just prefer this over regular orchid bark. I find that orchid bark, especially in the um, larger grade of it, it gets really like mushy and soft over a long period of time. Whereas this just kind of like holds, again, it holds its structure. It's very, very coarse. It's very like hard. Obviously the original intention of it was to grow orchids, but it works really well for aeroids too. I used to mix this in with my soil, but it's very, very pricey. So now I'm only going to be using it in my Lechuza Pond. So I'm going, it, you can actually use this straight from the bag. It's not very dusty at all, but I do like to give it a little bit of a rinse. So I'm going to give this a wash and then I will show you how I mix it up. So just taking a spoonful here, you can see there's coarse perlite, lechuzapon, and very, very fine 
LECA that um, I didn't sift out. I just kind of left it. And there actually, there actually is already some orchid bark in here from DIY Pond from Jing. I just kind of mixed it all together. This has been boiled and sanitized. And now I'm just going to be adding my orchid bark. Once this dries, I will just dump the rest into here, but it's kind of hard to get off right now. And then I'm just gonna mix this up. Feeling pretty good about this batch. I am going to reserve a lot of this pawn for my anthuriums. I am trying to move all of my anthuriums into passive hydro, but that will be for another video and you will understand why later. So in the meantime, I'm going to work on some rehabs today because I have a lot of them, unfortunately. I think the only one I'm going to repot right now is this very sad Syningia leucotrica that's been living in this pathetic plastic cup for too long. I'm just going to dump it in here. Oh, there's water in here. Why do oh no. Oh no. Oh, it's really root bound in here. Why won't you come out? Oh, it's like soil and, okay, 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 okay. Oh. Regroup here. I think I will keep this one in soil, but these roots are so crunchy. Sad I knocked that leaf off though, it looked really healthy. This one's definitely not as nice as my other Syningia leucotrica, but I am just grateful to have it. And I think maybe this spring it'll glow up. I just don't really know much about this plant. I don't know what it likes. I don't know anything. So I should probably do some research on that soon. But this one has just been living in my greenhouse, or in my greenhouse, in my Mars Hydro tent. I think I'm gonna grow it out on the shelf because I had my other one growing out on the shelf and it was actually very happy. I also had it in my red stuff for a while. It was also very happy, so I just don't think it needs to be in my tent anymore. It's kind of just taking up space. So I'm just getting this one back into soil and I just thought this vessel would be so cute for this little teeny tiny potato. Potato. No, it got on the leaf. It's so hard to get dirt off of these leaves because they're so fuzzy. Okay, this one's all potted up and it already looks a lot better, don't you think? This leaf is probably the nicest one on it and it's just so fuzzy. I hope this thing grows for me this spring. I would be so happy. I feel like since I'm here, I should just rehab one more thing. So who's it gonna be? Um, oh, 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 oh. Hello, hi. If you come close, I'm gonna give you a bath. Oh, ah, you're pushing me. Hello, child. I have these Rehab Skindapsis Silver Clouds that I love very much, but they rotted in soil. But I wanted to try and save them because these leaves are seriously like 
so beautiful, but they're just so dehydrated. I think that I'm gonna still like water prop them, I think, but um, I kind of want to get it enclosed so that it's like higher humidity. Here's what I'll do with this one. Uh, I'm do that. This stem is so long. What the heck is this? Is that a root? What is this? Look at a little, a little white rocket. <laughs> New growth? I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna try and shove these guys as far in as possible. That's what he said or she said or they said. I could probably use a bigger cup, but you know, we're just gonna make do with what we have. Stick that in there. Because I still want some airflow going into this thing. I actually don't really need such a tall one. I feel like this will do. Oh, so little. He's too little, that's fine. Okay, so I'm actually gonna poke some breathing holes into this thing using my awl. gonna hope that this well that this little makeshift greenhouse uncurls these leaves a bit I'm gonna stick it somewhere warm either in my mills bow because it's actually super warm in my mills bow or I'll stick it in my tent the next one is this Cebu blue and I do need to root this but I am going to get this one on a pole just because I want to just try and see how large I can grow these leaves my mandula has actually inspired me to pull a lot of the trailing plants that I have right now like my Scandapsis jade satin, my Glacier Pothos or my Enjoy, whatever it is. What else do I want to do? My Cebu Blue. And then there was one more that I can't really think of but this is one of them that I want to try and grow up a pole. But I will need to root it first and I think I'm gonna go with Water Prop. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with my Silver Cloud and just create sort of like a mini greenhouse. So I think that's all I'm gonna do for now. It's getting kind of late in the afternoon, so I need to make my husband's lunch and then maybe meet back with you tonight. Hello everyone. Happy Tuesday. I think it's Tuesday. Yes, it's Tuesday. Uh, I just had a full day of editing and dealing with more crap for YouTube, meaning people doing like copyright claims on my videos which is so annoying it's like this i think i've talked about it in another video but it's just like this scam that's going around where they target people um and try and claim part of their videos as their own particularly the music when all of the music that i use i have the like license to use it oh mother ever oh it's dead um, anywho, I was dealing with all of that and I just didn't really feel like filming earlier But now that I'm kind of done with the work day I just kind of want to play with plants and thought I would turn on the camera So what you're looking at behind me is my thrips quarantine chamber and all of these plants Had or have thrips and are currently being treated. Honestly, I've found thrips on More plants lately. I found it on my mycans uh, two days ago I found it on one of my Ethereums. like they're kind of just secretly everywhere but I'm just being more proactive now about using systemic and treating for thrips and I need to grab more thrips spray and I'm just trying to not freak out because honestly I go through this every single year and I just need to stop acting so surprised when they eventually find their way. So anyway, I'm taking a look at this plant and I can see... I can actually see thrips, but they're dead, and I don't know if that was from the systemic or from the spray. 
but you can see here all of the damage that it left behind on this new leaf. It also got this philodendron quillelii round and trying to see I'm surprised this leaf hasn't died yet. I don't even know why it's still on this plant. So I can actually see spider mites. I've had, honestly, I feel like all of my plants have spider mites right now. I'm just not even. I don't see any live larvae, but you know, they're always, they're always somewhere. But this one has been isolating for quite some time now. And I've treated it maybe like four times. I'm actually not seeing any prominent thrips damage, but I think it's because I caught it pretty early on this plant and I treated it right away. But in general, this thing has just not been doing well at all, like ever since I brought it home. This one is the newest leaf and it looks okay. Like honestly, I don't even see like any spider mite damage. There's just a few spots here and there, but I think it's gonna make quite a nice recovery. I do need to get this on a pole though. Just kind of waiting for this one to like drain out all of the nutrients and go into this plant because I'm kind of tired of seeing this, but I don't want to preemptively chop it off. So the next one is a Philodendron genevievianum and I don't think that this one left any thrips damage, but I did see like one or two of them on here and I treated it fairly quickly. So it's kind of promising that I'm not seeing any thrips damage on this emergent leaf. I just don't know why it's not unfurling. I need to fix that lazy pole. It's like leaning over. Ooh, what's that? Ah, it's wet. You know what? I think that's thrip spray. Crap. Next one is this Monstera Deliciosa, potentially a different kind of form, but I'm sort of doubting it just because it doesn't really feel like my other Monsteras that are like really, really thick. This feels like just kind of a normal Monstera, but I've kept it anyway, just because I feel like the mother plant had very good genetics and was a beautiful plant. So I just wanted to see what it would grow out to look like. Uh, but yeah, this one has been one of my toughest rooters, which is why I thought it was a Brazilian common form but it might just be a very, very finicky specimen. This one is rehabbing as well because I did find a thrip on it and we just don't take any chances around here. But the last one in here is the one that I think started it all. This one is another Monstera Deliciosa that I thought could be a different form, but I do think it is also just a regular Deliciosa as well, but the plant that it came from, just like the other one, had really, really pretty leaves. So when I find monsteras that to me look different or just have like nice features, I hoard them. And so here we are, but you can see this one has thrips damage pretty bad. What you wanna look for is this coppery color right here, this like sort of orangey color. You'll notice around the, the leaf edges, especially on emergent leaves, it kind of looks like it's burnt and it'll start to brown and then you'll get this very, very bright yellow, almost orange um, ring around it and then it kind of just bleeds into the rest of the plant. So if you're noticing this kind of damage, especially like little tiny spots like this of just like copper, like rusty looking spots, always, always, always look for thrips first because 99% of the time, that is what it is. I can spot a thrips plant from a bajillion miles away, especially in plant groups. I can like, literally, I, sh I should add it to my resume. It's like so easy for me to detect what thrips damage looks like. I want to get it out of this vessel because for one, I dropped it and it cracked all the way through. And when I water it, it just seeps out of the, out of the back. So I think I'm going to repot this today and just kind of see what's going on in there. There is a new leaf coming out and um, yeah, I think it's just time. Alrighty, let's get this sucker out of here. Wowza. These healthy roots. Delicious. 
Okay, so I'm not going to be reusing this soil because of the thrips, but I am going to be taking out the LECA and reusing that. Oh no, my lights are going to turn off. What time is it? Crap. Look at these delicious no drainage roots. I don't care what anyone says. So, um, I kind of want to chop off this leaf just in case there's any eggs embedded in here that are going to hatch soon. And just based on how many times I've treated this, I'm not really wanting to go for another treatment. So I'm just going to chop it off. But I think, should I wait until this one is fully emerged? Yeah. All right, maybe I'll wait. Let me grab a new vessel here. Oh, dusty. This is the world's worst view. Hold on. Okay, I don't know if that's better or worse, but we're just gonna get this repotted. I kind of want to use some landscape fabric. The question, oh man, I put it all the way on the top shelf. Cockapoo. Oh, right there. Good job, Charmaine. Got some like extra scraps here that I can use. I'm just gonna use some landscape fabric to cover these drainage holes because I don't want the roots escaping and I just freaking hate drainage holes. So I've cut the world's worst circle to fit the bottom here. As such, and water can still flow freely through here. So it's like the perfect combination of no drainage drainage holes. I should get this on the pole, but guess what? I don't want to. And why are you facing this direction? Can we just... This plant does not know what it's doing. Did not understand the assignment. <laughs> oh, I wish you guys could see Pudge right now. My door is like halfway cracked and he's just peeking his little eye through it. child and I can't bear it. It's too sad. Hi, sweet angel from heaven. Don't knock over my mic though. Oh, hi. I know I missed you. I missed you. Oh, I missed you. Are you ready to go take a nap? Because I am. Okay, so fuck booty. Fuck booty. Okay, just let me finish this up really quick and I will come hang with you, I promise. Should I get this on a pole? I do have a D-shaped pole I can use, but then I won't be able to fit it inside of my EXO. <gasps> what to do, what to do. I'll add it later. Although it's kind of perfect because now this stem is finally starting to grow upward. It was like kind of crawling for a little bit and I've got this node right here, this aerial root that is like perfect for a pole, but it's literally not gonna fit in here. So I'm not even gonna bother. Maybe I'll just stick like a little bamboo stick. Sticky stick, 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 stick. Where are all my bamboo poles? Why did I put them so high? Am I some sort of unstoppable moron? Dang it. Literally, like, I'm two feet tall. Why would I put it so high? Okay, well, that's not happening because I'm not getting the ladder out. So, we're just gonna deal with it. I might top it with moss, though. Should I? Should I? Should I? No. I don't wanna get thrips on my moss. Thripes is. Okay, let me just get this back in here because I don't want to look at it anymore. <laughs> Come on. I need to water some of these, but I'll do that after. 
you go in there. And then this ugly duckling goes in here. I don't want to see this leaf. And then I'm going to fix this freaking lazy pole. Look at it. Pathetic. Pathetic. Well, I guess that was pretty easy. Okay. That'll have to do. Oh, come on. <laughs> Maybe I'll put this in the back and then the monster in the front. Party in the back. Party in the front. I don't even know what I'm saying. Okay, let's try this again. What was I going to do? Oh, this in the back. Ugly, world's ugliest exo. All right, so I'm going to leave this for now, and then tonight I will do some watering in here. I'm tired. Look at my monstera, it's pushing out another leaf, and this one hasn't moved, but I think that if I separate this leaf, it'll wake it up, but I'm not really wanting to do that. Um, but it's kind of exciting that at least one of the nodes woke up and this leaf looks significantly larger than the one that came before it. What else should I do? Maybe I should do one more repotting since I'm here. I've got this whole... Oh, yeah. I wanted to show you guys this from last night. So this one is my Hoya Serpents. If you guys watched um, any of my videos about my Hoyas, you will know that this used to be nice and lush and beautiful and then it just all of a sudden wanted to die. And I started propagating it and it's like growing inside of the freaking moss. So I need to help this out like right now. This is an awkward angle because that's why it's awkward. I don't have a table. It's like it's just sitting on the floor. Should I move to the I'm gonna I'm gonna move to the table. This is this is dumb. Let's figure this out without breaking it. Strange little thing. Look at all this algae. I mean, I was just hoping for some roots, but we got the whole shebang here. I think I, I can probably move this back into my Hoya cabinet, but I need to get it into something more permanent. I don't want to be growing this thing in moss anymore. Oh my god, these little teeny tiny leaves. Are you kidding? They're so cute. This is still one of my favorite Hoyas. Like, look at those little precious leaves. I just want to bite them. You guys ever feel like that? You just want to, like, bite your plant because it's so cute. I think Jane has explained it as a term called cute aggression. There is a term... Oh, I just broke that root. Perfect. Um, there's a word that we use in Tagalog uh, that is called gigil. <laughs> and gigil is kind of like all-encompassing. And I think the only way I can explain it in English is, yeah, like cute aggression. Like when you see a cute baby and you just want to like, you know, oh no. I swear, my hands are the clunkiest hands in the whole wide world. I hate my hands so much. They just destroy everything they touch. I don't want this to break. I think I want to get this into pu Oh, did I? <laughs> no, I broke this. I knew I heard something snap. Look. <gasps> no, I'm so sad. I want to cry. What the heck is wrong with me? Do you think I can propagate this? I'm gonna try. It's just so precious. Some of you are probably so mad at me right now. Um, 
so tangled. Okay, so we've got one right here with that broken off growth point. Damn it. This one's all dried out though. Like that, it's dying. And, all right, whatever. And then we've got this one here, which I don't know which, what is this thing doing? There's so many, how do I even pot something like this? Um, freaking. I'm gonna snip off this cause it's completely dried. This is completely dried too. And it's not focused, of course. Uh, yeah, I have no freaking clue how to pot this cause it's growing like, like I feel like I just have to just do this and just let it figure itself out. Hopefully this thing makes a nice recovery because I was honestly devastated when it started declining. Um, and I did have it in pond before, you can see. <laughs> Everyone unsubscribe to me right now, I'm quitting. This is freaking ridiculous. Okay, let's just get this potted before I freaking damage it anymore. I'm so annoying. All of my new growth, basically, I snapped off besides this one right here. Snapped off this one. Where's the other one? Over here. Okay, whatever, whatever, get over it. I was gonna try and cheer myself up by eating some Cheez-Its, but I freaking ate them all last night when I got high. I am my own worst enemy. I want to go a bit deeper, but honestly, these roots up at the top, that like, there's roots right here. I should have repotted this a long time ago, so we're just going to figure out what happens, and hopefully I can get some new leaves growing on these ones. But I'm just glad that I at least salvaged this little guy down here. And I'm not freaking touching this anymore. This is why I should not own nice things. Okay, and then I guess this one can go back in the prop box. But this one's like all dried out. I'm not even sure if it's worth saving at this point. I do have a node here. And I did have a new growth there. So I think I'm just going to chop it where it's like fully dried out uh, like the whole thing <laughs> I can't even tell I'm just gonna chop it right here and then put this back in the prop box I don't know what's gonna happen with this but I'm just gonna stick this back I'm just gonna stick this back in the prop box too why isn't it focusing typical 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 the last thing I'm gonna do is give a wipe down to some of my plants in my Millsbo cabinet because there were some spider mites in there too and I haven't really seen any on here but I just want to preemptively sort of clean it down and then spray it with some insecticidal soap just because this is one of my pride and joys and I'm not really trying to compromise her if I can. I'm just using some Dr. Bronner's Pure Castile Soap, the unscented one. And then I have a bowl of water here that I'm just going to mix some in. And then I have part of a sponge. And I'm just going to give it a wipe down. While I'm here, I guess I should just do a little update. Um, I haven't done sort of a like anxiety video in a long time or really like taking the time to talk about it and I have had some really amazing comments and messages left on my anxiety depression and plants video and honestly sometimes it's hard for me to reply to them because a lot of people have shared their trauma have shared their their um, struggles and like it, it's really hard for me to reply to them sometimes without it kind of triggering my own stuff but I just want everyone to know that like I'm super appreciative if you watched it and you shared something with me and uh yeah you know I have like a lot of good and bad days and my psychiatrist actually wants to assess me for BPD because of like how kind of all over the place I am 
I don't really feel like I have bipolar disorder. I just, uh, but something's definitely, something's definitely going on. And um, I'm really excited to be able to actually sit down with my psychiatrist and kind of figure things out because this has just been long overdue and I just want my life back. <laughs> Crap, an old green leaf. Honestly, I kind of want to chop it off, but I always feel bad. Um, so anyway, like, you know, things are, things are always up and down. Uh, whenever things get too good, I'm always kind of holding my breath for, like, a really bad day. And that's just kind of the mindset that you get into when you deal with something like anxiety and depression. You just know that, like, it's not always that way. And I'm, I'm sort of sick of the... Uh, narrative or this like uneducated opinion that people have that's like oh you have a choice and you're just you're keeping yourself you're the only one keeping yourself stuck and you're doing this to yourself please you guys miss me with that miss me with that so hard I'm not here for it I'm just deleting those comments honestly educate yourself before you talk on the internet because some of you make yourself look really stupid not even gonna lie. Man, I love this plant so much, but it produces so much EFN, it's kind of annoying. It's getting really tall. I kind of want to chop it again, but then I don't. I sort of want to just let us let it see how wild it can get, because it's definitely getting there. I'm going to just take this over to the sink and rinse down the leaves to get any other like soap residue off because I don't want it sort of sticking onto the leaves. So let me do that and then I will be right back. Gave that a quick rinse under the, in the sink, and now I'm just gonna dry it off with a regular towel before I polish it with my microfiber cloth. Honestly, I feel like the philodendron Burley Marks is one of the easiest philodendrons to care for. And the only reason that I'm not growing it outside of a greenhouse is because I like the amount of light that it's getting in the Millsbo. At this point, I'm not really sure what is going to happen to my Millsbo. It's kind of just like the bottom are just propagations and then the top are just like some begonias and random plants. But I kind of want to give it more purpose than that. I do want to keep the bottom as propagations because my props do so well in there, but I film a lot in that corner and I sort of just want it to look a little bit better for the videos and I feel like I'm not really utilizing it as much as I could be. So that's another reason why I've kept this plant in there because it's really pretty and I kind of like seeing it in the background of some videos, but it's definitely getting... <laughs> really large. I don't know how much longer it can actually live in there before it's like pressed up against the glass. Got my little bear here, my bear microfiber cloth. I always use the back of him though because I don't want his I don't want his cute little face scratching my leaves, but I just find that this method has actually worked well for polishing leaves and kind of bringing back that natural shine they have without needing to use any kind of like oils or milk or whatever people are doing these days. I just feel like in order for a plant to be like as healthy as, as healthy as it can be and maximize photosynthesis, your plants should just be clean, free of dust, free of dirt. And the only thing that I really want on there is foliar spray. Just be careful when, if you have hard water because then it can leave markings on your leaves and it actually has left some marks on my philodendron sp columbia and i gotta try and get those water stains off because it doesn't look very pretty um uh, i talked about this on my instagram and i know i talk about it pretty often here about what i'm watching right now and right now i am watching warrior on cinemax um if you're in canada it's available on crave my friend Diane is in it, she plays my Ling, and she is brilliant, and it's just such a good show, like the fighting scenes are incredible. It's based on the writings of Bruce Lee, the cast is incredible, and I just really love it. It is um, kind of a hard watch though, like there's a lot of very, very gruesome 
scenes and there's just a lot there's a lot that happens and I'm only on season one right now so it's not for the faint of heart you definitely have to have kind of a tougher stomach to watch it but you, you guys know me I kind of watch everything under the sun except for like romance really and I'm just really really enjoying it so if you're looking for something to watch highly recommend it right so I think I've given this guy enough TLC how's the water I need to water this thing. Man, this thing is getting really, really root bound in here. I'm probably going to have to repot it again soon. And I just repotted this when my mom was here because I chopped half of the plant for her. But um, yeah, it's grown back so well. I think um, eventually, once this grows a bit more, I think I'll cut like over here because Jing just told us in the group chat today that her um, her her plant died so she's gonna need a replacement stat we will not accept that all right let's grab another plant here's a plant I don't show very often on my channel this is a Syngonium Chia Pence I got this from Jing and like I really like it but for some reason I'm having a hard time like really really loving it I don't know why like these leaves feel so so nice they're like so supple they're matte and it's I mean it's beautiful I think that like I don't know I really don't know what it is but I do need to get this on a pole should I do that today should we how are we feeling are you guys bored I feel boring today sometimes I just have nothing to talk about though for real I just want to like play with plants uh yeah I feel like she's ready um, 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 um. Okay, let's uh, let's get it out of here first, and then we will thing a thing. You know what I mean? Thing a thing a thing. I'm freaking hungry. Ah. Let's get this out of here. I've been living in this plastic cup for so long. I've been trying to be very good this week about cleaning up after myself every day and like actually washing all the vessels and not sticking it in a bin, but it kind of helps that I don't have a bin to put it in. So I think that's the key. Oh, you can't see anything. That's good and great for a video. So yeah, I think that the key is going to be to not give myself a bin so that I'm forced to either look at it sitting in a place that I don't want it in or just cleaning it up like I should be anyway. Can't tell if these are good or bad roots. Like they look nasty, but they look alive. They're firm. I'm just gonna leave it. Like these look more alive to me, but I think cause they're newer. The plant is growing really well though. So I can't imagine that all of that is bad roots. There's a lot happening here. So let's break this down. This one is, this one down here. Am I, am I assessing this correctly? Yeah, so this is the original chunk right here. It looks like it was like a one or two node chunk. And then it pushed out this growth. Or what am I looking at? Yeah, what? Yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> and then it pushed out this growth from this chunk and then it was chopped again and then it activated down here and that's where my new growth is. So we've got like all the ancestors here. <laughs> the entire, we've got three generations of Syngonium Chia Pens. You know what sucks is that if I'm going to be sticking to my word and cleaning up after myself, that means I need to clean this before I go to bed. <sighs> I'm just checking to see if this one has any spider mites, but I'm not seeing anything. I'm just gonna use this same mixture again and get this wiped down. Thank you. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not be dramatic here. Okay, let's make my pole. I'm pretty much gonna use the length of this because this chia pants has very long petioles and it's gonna outgrow it really, really fast. So crooked. I guess I'm just going to get cleaned up here, like actually cleaned up, not just <laughs> tuck everything away. I hate it so much, but uh, I, I do still have some plants in the um, Millsbow. Oh, maybe I shouldn't play with that. I do still have some plants in the Millsbow that I also need to kind of treat and use do like spider mite prevention and just kind of give it TLC. My variegated burly marks is like glowing in the Millsville right now, it's so shiny and beautiful. Oh my gosh, okay. Now that this plant is on a pole, I'm like, okay, I get it. Look at her. She's kind of cute, but like, why do we, why, why is it like not, I wish it was like kind of growing in the center. I don't know why there's this gaping sort of um, emptiness in the center. I wonder if I propagate it and kind of tuck one in here and make it look a little fuller but it actually would make a great plant for sticking in the back because then I could stick a plant in front of it and not have it block these leaves. I'm kind of feeling inspired to redo my Mills bow. I say that now, we'll see how I feel later. But anywho, Syngonium Chia Pens is done and uh, if I don't see you tonight, I will see you bright and early on Wednesday. Good morning, Pudge. Hi, happy Wednesday. It is a freaking gorgeous spring day today. I'm so... Oh. <laughs> Are you okay? 
Oh my gosh, he just ate. Um, okay. Well, anyway, uh, good morning. It is super sunny day today and I just, ugh, these are my favorite kind of mornings when, this is the brightest time of day in this apartment is in the morning. Um, otherwise, it's sort of just like indirect light all day. But <laughs> a lot of people think that these huge windows means that my place is just always sunny and bright all the time. And that's not true. It's really just in the morning and then like right before sunset that we get like really nice light directly on the shelf. So yeah, I usually try and soak it in when I can. But everybody is doing okay here. I actually had a night a couple nights ago. This was before I was filming for um, the week of. And I just put on a scary movie and watered all my plants out here. So everyone is kind of okay. Anyway, there's a new, <laughs> there's a new leaf coming in on my Monstera. And the Florida green that I repotted last week is actually doing really well. Actually, all of the plants that I separated are doing well. So that's a really nice surprise. Yesterday, I saw this begonia tamaya that was staked up and it was like a tree. And now I'm kind of like inspired to do that with my begonia sinbad and just make a sinbad tree because like, look how big this thing is getting you guys. Like it is wild um there's so many growth points oh my gosh this light there's so many growth points waking up it's gonna be really massive pretty soon and initially i was like well what if i just let it trail and just kind of let it like cascade down i thought that might be pretty but i don't know now i'm kind of inclined to make like a climbing begonia tree i don't know what do you guys think Otherwise, yeah, everyone is pretty much okay. Literally everyone out here is watered. And I think I'm just gonna make some coffee and then we are going to tend to the imports and see how they're doing, do some chunk cleaning, do some rerouting, and oh, that's a big eye buggy pudge, <laughs> pug things. Um, and yeah, so I will make some coffee and meet you guys in the plant room. What is it? Hey, little cutie. All right, so acclimation box has been doing its job. Everything still looks very perky, but honestly, everything arrived in really, really good shape. It's probably one of the best imports I've had in terms of, um, <laughs> in terms of condition upon arrival. So I did end up adding two layers of parchment paper in the box. You can't really tell, I'll show you in a bit. Just to diffuse the light a little bit, provide it with a little bit of shade so that it's not too harsh of light on the imports. I'm gonna open up this box and kind of just show you guys how everything's doing and then we will get into the root systems, do some cleaning, and hopefully everybody um, is in a much better place after today. Okay, so first to show you the parchment paper, I just got one piece of parchment paper, folded it over, and then added some tape on the sides to hold it in. That's pretty much it. Just, uh, I've found that that helps a lot if you have a grow light that's a little bit too strong for a greenhouse or a space like this. I've done it with my EXOs. When I was using my Mars Hydro light in my EXO, it was very, very, very strong. So what I did was added like seven layers of parchment paper underneath the top of the tank to kind of diffuse that light a little bit. And it did help, but things still got burned. But obviously the grow lights that I'm using in this box are nothing near the strength of a Mars Hydro light. Anyway, let me just grab the first one. So the Philodendron SP Columbia is still as perky as the day I received it. It actually feels even more perky now. Looking at the root, I can tell some of these are not going to be good, but I think some might still be okay. I'm just not quite sure yet. I might want to chop a little bit off this chunk because I'm going to train it to crawl. I don't want this long vertical stem in the pot. But yeah, everyone's doing okay. No yellowing. 
Um, don't see any pests. Usually if a plant has a pest like thrips or something like embedded in the soft tissue after like a few Not maybe not days. I feel like that's a little bit too soon But like after like a week or two or three inside of a warm greenhouse or in a prop in They start to hatch and that's when you'll see them So even though these guys are looking like they're in the clear and they're very very healthy I don't see any pest damage on it I'm still going to keep these isolated from the rest of my plants for a while while especially since some of my plants have thrips and spider mites I don't want to give them that as well so it, go, it works both ways but yeah I am actually feeling very good about this plant and oh, I love it so much I didn't really give you guys a good look at these ones these ones are not doing that great they were kind of in rough shape when they arrived this one is the honestly I don't even know what this is but yeah, lots of yellowing on this one. It wasn't yellow when I received it, but I kind of already knew that it was going to start to yellow. This one has not yellowed a lot. And sorry, I don't know the names. I'll throw them up on the screen, obviously. Um, it, as crazy as it looks, it actually has perked up a lot. Um, this ear won't perk up because it's broken at the sinus. But otherwise, it's feeling a lot more um, firm than it was when it was in my EXO. Oh, come on, why did I do that? So dirty. So yeah, these ones are definitely gonna need a lot of help, but you know, we'll get there. Next up are the Gloriosums. It's so funny how they sent me two. Yeah, I think we've just kind of confirmed that these are the regular Gloriosum Verde. This is just regular Gloriosum Verde, which I'm not mad at. It's a very, very easy plant to care for in my opinion. Um, I have had a little bit of a tougher time trying to size this form up opposed to my dark form, round form, whatever it is. My exo back here is virtually empty because I have moved a lot of plants into a space I haven't shown you yet, not really, unless you really pick apart my Instagram photos. That one's coming soon, but I've moved so many plants out. I have sold a lot of plants. I've given away a lot of plants. I really packed my tent. So this is literally, I have like five plants in there and I'm planning to do like a whole video on getting it like completely redone, but I just have to decide what I wanna do. But once these move out of my bin, I'm basically going to be moving all of these into that EXO, I think, to have them live there together for a while during their quarantine period, which is gonna be roughly a month or two. But yeah, uh, this one, very, very perky still. Not a lot of uh, yellowing, just has done completely fine. I'm not 100% sure if these roots are going to make it, but I've got to really kind of take a closer look to see what we're working with here. Last but not least, these beautiful serpents, which I was actually expecting some leaf yellowing at this point just because I've seen a lot of posts online about people importing serpents and it's just like within a day or two they just start declining they look really limp they're just not happy but that has not been the case for the serpents it's just yeah it's so much plumper and firmer than when I received it it's like the leaves are standing up a lot more the petioles are harder to bend this caterpillar actually looks like it's gotten larger but I'm not really expecting any growth out of it anytime soon despite how large it is because now we're gonna work on rerooting and I'm telling you right now I am NOT liking these roots at all uh, just based on my experience with importing in the past and leaving import import roots on i can tell you already that these are likely going to mush over if i move it into moss or pond or whatever but i think this time around and i've never done this before i think i'm going to acclimate these in the choose upon opposed to moss believe it or not i am gonna try to use less moss this year i just I love moss as a growing medium, as a rehab medium, and I still will be using it um, for very, very finicky plants or things that I just am having a lot of trouble with. But uh, I have not loved the process of untangling roots and just breaking roots when it gets really stuck on there. And something like pond or perlite is just so much easier to work with. My goal is going to be to use less moss this year 
we'll see how that goes um but yeah i'm going to try and move all of these to passive hydro and because these were grown in moss i feel like starting over with these roots is going to be the best bet because i have zero faith that these roots will take well to um, passive hydro anyway um that is it for all of them i guess what i'll do is just go one by one and start cleaning them up all i really need for this part are my shears a bowl of water some paper towel my earwax scraper and i'm probably gonna need maybe my toothbrush and maybe another bowl okay let's do this one first this one doesn't really have much of a stem but I can start to see it's wanting to crawl now, so that's good. Not much cleaning up that needs to be done here, but I probably will remove a few of these roots. I'm going to be treating these a little bit differently than the imports that I cared for in my Equigenera, like starting the acclimation process. If you guys watched that video, that one was a little bit more of an intense acclimation process. Since these ones are in really good shape, I'm not really gonna do like the full thing for them. Like if these arrived really, really limp and sad, I would have done like the full thing because I really believe that doing like a soak, like a full soak, like foliage soak, root soak in water helps perk them up right after import. Warm, not warm water, but like room temperature water, not cold water, not hot water. Uh, what is that? Moss, okay. Yeah, I find that that really, really helps with perking leaves up, especially on anthuriums. I'm just gonna like yank off some of these secondary roots that I really have zero faith are going to make it through this acclimation period. I will likely leave these primary roots just to see what they do, but these little fine secondary ones, these ones are gonna just turn to mush. I can almost guarantee it. I've pulled off all of the secondary roots off of the primary roots and something exciting is there is a brand new root right here that looks like it would have formed in my care. Right there, that little guy. I've got some aerial roots up here that are starting to poke out. So I'm feeling good about this one. Um, well, I'm just going to set this aside and then get that potted up. This one has a lot of secondary roots and a chunk. I'm not quite sure if I want to separate the chunk because there are quite a few roots growing from it, but it does have its own little root system here now. This leaf is coming out, which is exciting. That means it's alive and kicking. I think I am going to chop this off since there are some roots on it already. I'm just a little bit nervous since that guy is coming out. Cause the thing is, is like if I get this in the pot, this is like taking up space, but I don't know. Maybe I'll just leave it. Let's just get this cleaned up and we will make an assessment after.
I think I am gonna separate this because it's like hanging on by a thread anyway. So uh, I'm feeling good about how many roots I have attached to the actual rhizome that I'm working with. So I'm just gonna chop this off right here. Perfect. Yeah, that's not a ton of roots that it was relying on anyway. This has its own little root system. So let's work on this chunk first because it's still viable and I actually have got something pop in there. And it'd be nice to just get this cleaned up. So this chunk is done and there's really not much else I need to do on this one. This one's pretty much ready to go into Lechuza Pond. Same really with this one. There's not too much cleaning. I'm probably just going to remove this gunk down here, which is basically just a uh, moss. All right, this one is as clean as it's gonna get. I'm gonna do whatever this is next, I think. I'm not liking these, I'm not liking the color of it. So I'm gonna get this one cleaned up a lot, a lot. Uh, I'm just gonna start chopping away here and pretty much start over, I think. I'm not gonna chop all of them off, but I will chop a good amount off. I'm really happy to see these new roots. I just hope that I don't break them while I'm doing this. Some of these primary roots look good still. I'm going to try and preserve them as much as possible. But again, just going to be removing some of these secondary roots that are really, really fine and um, are really not gonna be doing anything but taking up space in my vessel. So yeah, I'm just gonna time lapse this again because this is gonna take me quite some time. And honestly, I'm not feeling very chatty. I'm still trying to wake up here. It's still pretty early in the morning. It's not even, I don't even think it's nine o'clock yet. And my caffeine has not quite kicked in yet.
feeling pretty good about this. I am not sure if these roots will make it, but they are still feeling very, very firm and plump. So hopefully we get some new roots out of them. If not, it's fine because we've already got a head start up here, which um, rooted pretty nicely in water. So I think that it's gonna take to pond really, really well. Just again, have to make sure I don't break them. Um, who's next? Let's do this weirdo and therium guy. We've got a lot going on here. I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm not really sure what I'm looking at, to be quite honest with you. While these roots look nice and firm, a lot of them are broken. And it's really hard to see, but like, can you see that right there? Like it's broken right in the center of it and it's just mushing right off. So don't always trust what you see. Like right here, this one is just sliding off. To be honest with you, if this was my plant, I would just start over. I do have some nice new roots forming here and here. And I'm just really not liking these. I know that Jing wouldn't really care what I do, but um, you know, it's always a risk when you're just chopping uh, roots off. But like, look at this right here. Like, to the eye, it looks like a nice, big, juicy root, but dead. So I'm gonna chop this one off. This one is not doing anything. This one here is really nice and firm up here, but it's broken right here. So I'm just gonna chop it off and remove anything attached to this one. This one is really yucky, but it's as good as it's gonna get for now. We've got two more left to go here. Oh my goodness, I'm tired already. Oh, this is gonna be a big one. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. All the roots, ow, all the roots are pretty much up here. So I'm gonna start by chopping as close to this new growth point as possible. I'm gonna chop like right here. And then I'll get this cleaned up and I can make more plants, which is exciting. Um, 
This is a petiole. So much better. You can actually see the chonk now and the stem and the rhizome. It's green instead of black, which is a great sign. But now, let's find my little chonk guy. I'm just gonna chop this off, start over. This one should clean up pretty well too. Looking like peeled ginger, which means it was a success. There is um, some like dirt trapped inside of these little crevices that I'm not really gonna worry about for the most part. I feel like I got a majority of the nasty gunk out and uh, I think it's gonna be fine. Just the like OCD in me wants it to be completely clean, but at the same time, you don't want to cut too much into the tissue. You're really just wanting to kind of um, disturb the very top layer of tissue and not really cut into the stem. So I'm going to be leaving that. The grand finale, <laughs> this beautiful serpent. I actually have so much polyfill to remove from these fuzzy petioles and fuzzy everything. Like it's literally everywhere. I think this one is going to be kind of a gross one too. Oh, yuck. I really just want to start over, but I'm 
I'm so nervous about this plant. Okay, Charmaine, what are we gonna do here? What are we gonna do? I almost wanna chop off this chunk from it because there's no roots growing from it and it's just taking up space. Okay, okay, we're gonna do it. We're just gonna do it. Separated. I feel a lot better now. I'll get this cleaned up and see if there's anything to salvage on it, but let's tackle this one first. <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking at. Okay, well that's gotta go. That's that's nasty. Oh, it's too melded together. I'm gonna chop this one off. Can you guys even see what I'm doing? Oh, it smells terrible. It smells like when um you leave Lechuza Pond for too long and it just smells like garbage water. I am going to hurl. I hate this smell. It's like almost worse than fertilizer water. And my hands are like so wrinkled already from handling water. They're like so, they're like prunes. So I'm actually not seeing any auxiliary buds here. So this was the node. This is where the growth came out of. This was the auxiliary node. So I actually think that this one is probably spent now because if there were any auxiliary buds on this, it would have been down here or up here and it's just looking like one single node was chopped off. 
This is a pretty, pretty big um, chunk. So I was kind of hoping there was something on it underneath all that gunk, but I'm not seeing anything. Some people don't believe in spent nodes, but I have yet to see someone show proof that growth can just pop out from anywhere in the stem. Okay, so that one was done, but at least I burned some calories cleaning that chunk. <sighs> now I'm going to rinse these in the sink really quickly and then we will get them potted up. Ah. I wanna show you guys quickly how I screwed up. Um, I had talked about this before in another video about how sensitive water roots are when taken out of water. Okay, so if you guys remember on that unidentified philodendron, these water roots, they were nice and healthy when I took them out, but they've been sitting out of water for about, I don't know, 40 minutes now, and you can see how quickly these just dried up and turned brown. So when you are taking a water-rooted plant out to work on it, you wanna make sure that you're either wrapping it in paper towel um, to keep that moisture or else this is gonna happen. So that kind of sucks, but I'm not too worried. I just thought it would be a good learning lesson if you guys weren't aware that that happens. Water roots are very, very, very sensitive. So I'm gonna get that one potted up first before it completely dries out on me. Since this one is going back to Jing, I'm not going to put it in pond. I'm actually going to use moss. <laughs> it's so big and awkward. I'm going to punch some holes back here. I'm going to punch two holes side by side. Try and tuck this in as much as possible. No, don't go in there. It's dirty. And then I have a velcro tie here that has been chopped in half. I'm going to string it in through one hole and then string it back out the back. And that way it can be supported on this cup like this. And then I'm going to push it back and then secure it so that it's just stuck to the cup and then I can keep it supported without needing to put a pole in there. This one is a sad, sad boy, but luckily there's a new growth. It did kind of crisp up at the tip, but new growth is better than nothing. It's dripping, it's dripping, it's dripping. Okay. The next one that I need to get into moss is that weirdo anthurium guy that has the longest, the longest petioles in the world. Why are you so long? Why? Okay, let's put it in another cup. Weirdo, weirdo, weirdo. one is good okay let's do the serpents first because I'm just really nervous about this one I'm gonna just use my little rooting hormone mixture here sorry if you have heard me say this a million times but I try and remember that some people are gonna be new this is just a mixture of rooting hormone cinnamon powder and sulfur dust this is the best I've got right now, you guys. It's pathetic. If this pond falls to the floor, I'm giving this hobby up and I'm really gonna do rock polishing. I'm not kidding. Ah! There's so much polyfill. I thought I got it all. <laughs> this polyfill is gonna haunt me for the rest of my days. I just know it. I can't even tell you guys how nervous I am to be acclimating in Lechuza Pond. I've always done moss, but I'm just ready to try something new. I know that people do acclimate in pond 
it's just I've never done it and I don't know why I'm so nervous. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to be doing a pot with drainage inside of a no drainage pot. This one is crawling, starting to crawl. So I'm going to do it on one side of the pot. Oh, I should probably grab my pond. Got this little bamboo stake here. I'm gonna stick it inside of the vessel like this to hold this plant up. To be honest, I could have made this a separate video, but we're doing it in the week of plant chores because I know you guys like this series to be long and I will deliver. So now I'm going to secure one of the petioles to this bamboo stake just to keep it upright. And now I'm going to be using these two rocks just to kind of stabilize it a little bit more make sure that it doesn't move around. This big leaf up here is like kind of leaning forward a bit and I just wanna give it some support. So I'm gonna also secure it to this bamboo stake. So this one is done for the most part. It's actually just, oh, it's so beautiful. It's so perky and happy still. Hopefully I didn't stress it out too much. I'm feeling not super confident in acclimating in pawn, but I'm going to just think happy thoughts. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts. I'm gonna be a resourceful queen today. <laughs> I've never, ever, 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 ever potted in a Tupperware, a musty, crusty one at that. But I'm not joking, you guys. I have no vessels. So this is gonna have to do for this one. I mean, figure it out, dude. For this one, I'm gonna need a rock. Oh, it's today. Okay, just give me one second, sorry. Your dog's very protective. Oh, he just wants to say hi, to be honest. <laughs> I totally forgot we had some repairs on the balcony today. This woodpecker was literally trying to take down our entire building and pecked a hole half, almost halfway through a supporting beam. So thankfully that is resolved now. Everything is back in the bin. Obviously I couldn't talk because there were repair people here. Pudge was gone bonkers. And uh, yeah, now they will stay in the bin for weeks and weeks and weeks until we can figure out what's gonna happen with them. But while I'm here still, the last things I want to do before I have a long day of editing is finally repot some of my last um, anthuriums that are in moss and put it into passive hydro. This one here dries out so fast and you can see all of the times that I have severely mistreated it and it has acted up from being underwatered. Whoa, 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 whoa. Feeling pretty good about it transitioning to um, pond. These roots look pretty good. I hope it's not too much of a nightmare to take this out.
Ooh, we got a good sized chunk here. Should I farm more for Getty Eyes? Let's see what the root situation looks like. Because if all the roots are kind of coming out of where the new growth is, then I am 100% going to chop it. This is my favorite form of forgetty eye, and I would love to own more. Right now I have two. Wait, where's my other one? Oh yeah, two. But why only have two when you can have 17? So I do have other auxiliary nodes on this chunk. But some of these... I'm not quite sure I want to separate it because although some of them might be able to wake up like this one down here it's a very very dicey cut i'd like have to go in with an exacto knife and like slice it right here and this one is actually growing so well i don't want to compromise it more so let's just leave it for now and once it grows a bit more and this stem gets longer then I'll be able to make a much easier chop, but I'm at least grateful that I know that I've got like a good chunk to work with still if I did want to propagate more. I'm not too worried about all this moss that's sticking on the roots when I move it to passive hydro. It's really just soil that I am a little bit more like neurotic about, about getting the roots cleaner, but moss is not as much of an issue for me. Obviously I wish that these weren't mossy roots, but I've done moss to passive hydro a bajillion times. The next one is this Anthurium vitarifolium. This one has some perlite mixed into it. Ever since I showed this on my YouTube, I've had people message me asking me if I'm selling cuttings and sorry guys, the answer is no. I just acquired this, it's not a huge cutting like you can see I'm not working with a ton of stem right now without chopping into like one of these leaves or something and I don't really have any desire to cut this plant I'd love to just kind of see it live its life to the fullest <laughs> without chopping but yeah I was very grateful that my friend Carmen gifted this plant to me she's just so generous this thing has not dropped a single leaf since coming home it hasn't yellowed at all it's just been such a champ and this was one of the plants that actually I found thrips on. Nothing can phase her. She's unstoppable. I could do a soak, a water soak, to kind of melt off some of this moss, but I don't really want to. <laughs> I'm kind of ready to just lay out in the sun. And it's not really that bad. This one is potted. I'm going to wait a little bit before adding water. And when I do add water, I'm gonna tilt it a little bit to one side and I'm gonna let the water run down the edge of it. Just because I did add mycorrhizae to the roots and I kind of want the mycorrhizae to like interact with the roots before it's just like washed away with water. So yeah, this one's done. And I think I just have enough pond for my forgetty eye, which I don't know where I'm potting this. Great. Not ideal, but kind of the perfect size. I have done way too much today. Who does she think she is? Oh my gosh, okay, I had to steal a little bit of Lechuza Pond from another plant, but 
This one is more deserving. The other one has been an ungrateful bastard. And sometimes we have to show them that if you don't act right, then we're gonna utilize our resources elsewhere. Anyway, just enough pawn for this one. I am so relieved that I, that I got this done. I have been putting this off for weeks. I don't know why, not even weeks, like months. That is the last bit of juice that I had left flowing through me. And now I'm going to stuff my belly and I will likely see you back tonight because I think I need to film another YouTube video today um, and I'll just show you some behind the scenes and all that good stuff. So anyway, I'll see you in a second. Hey guys, so first off, please excuse my voice. It's gonna keep cracking and going in and out and sounding weird, <clears throat> but I'm not feeling well. I think I'm actually sick. I don't think it's the flu, but it might be a cold something, but I just have not been feeling well at all. I've been in bed for like two days and my voice keeps going in and out and I don't know why. So I'm gonna make this fast, but I am in the middle of editing this video. And as you know, it's hit the two and a half hour mark and I just, I just refuse to put out a video longer than two and a half hours. It's just too crazy. It's too long. It's too much. So I'm actually going to be breaking this video up into two parts. So part one will be everything you saw up until Wednesday. And then next weekend, I will show you everything that happened from Thursday until Tuesday, I think, if I can remember correctly. But sorry to disappoint you if you were hoping that I would just put it all in one video. But it's just, I do love the long videos, but anything longer than two and a half hours is just kind of it's kind of excessive for me so anyway thank you guys for being here thank you for watching another long video if you liked it please don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it helps Pudge and I's visibility a lot on youtube and we would greatly greatly appreciate it thank you everyone who has been here from the beginning new subscribers thank you for all the love and we will see you in the next one